Hey everyone, this is Slomi, and today I'm making a wig for my current work in progress doll, which is a kid version of the character Vaughn from my epic fantasy series, The Snake's Blood Saga. Several years ago, I made a wig for the adult version of this doll character, which is my April House SID Claude, and I still had a bit of the alpaca fiber I had dyed specifically for the job. I thought it would be a great idea to remake the same wig for this smaller version, and well, it didn't quite go how I wanted, but I don't think that's necessarily the fault of the wig. I made my usual hard wig cap, which is a process I've shared in previous videos, using several layers of nylon stockings glued together with plain PVA glue. This is just ordinary school glue, and I use the same thing to glue the loose hair onto the wig. A lot of people prefer waterproof glues for doll wigs. I haven't had issues cleaning mine despite them not being waterproof, but hey, everyone has different preferences, and that's fine. I chose to use a direct application method for this wig rather than making wefts because I knew I would need to cut the fiber in order to have enough to do the whole wig. So you can see me cutting pieces as I go along. I cut the hair off much longer than what I want it to be on the final wig, because that gives me space to thin the ends of each layer and help it blend better. But you know, after doing this wig, I think I've decided I don't want to use this method anymore. It saves a lot of fiber, and it looks fine in the end, but it's so much extra work, and since I have hypermobility issues in my hands, it's not the most practical for me to do physically either. One interesting thing that comes up anytime you do a project over and over again is you start to learn what parts of that project are actually fun, what parts are efficient, and what parts would be worth spending more money on to make them easier. I've now made several wigs in this style, and I can safely say that I think taking the time to trim the ends of blunt layers to blend them is absolutely not worth the time and effort. And if I make short wigs again, I'm just going to buy extra alpaca fiber and use the natural tips so I don't have to do that step. It'll be faster, easier, better for my hands and my stress levels, and will give what I think are ultimately better results. For this particular wig, I don't think it was something I could avoid, since I was using leftovers in very limited quantities and needed to be careful to ensure I had enough fiber to do the whole wig. But in a do-over, which is very likely to happen, I'd just dye a new batch and not worry about whether or not it matched perfectly. I saved most of the nice natural tips for the front of the doll's wig, where they can be applied to hang around the face, but also to be swept back and styled like the wig for the larger doll. And now that I rewatch myself making this, I sort of wonder what I was thinking, because this wig was never going to be flattering to such a small doll head, and he needed a very different hairstyle from what the adult version of him had. I encountered a bit of an unusual problem with this wig, which is that as I applied the wefts, it started to slide back and I didn't notice, so it ended up having a bit of an odd bump near the front where the hair didn't lay as nicely as I wanted. Since I used a water-soluble glue, that's actually something I can fix later by wetting down the inside of the wig cap and putting it back on the doll's head to dry in a revised shape. So if you've ever wondered about whether or not there are benefits to not using a waterproof glue, there's one. 
Wrinkles can happen on any flexible cap, and if I'd used a waterproof glue instead of school glue, I wouldn't be able to fix it. I was really determined to make this work though, and you can see I devoted a ton of time to blending the layers in the back of the wig. I do this with both regular hair trimming scissors and also thinning shears, which are sometimes nice for doll wigs because it gives you more varied strand lengths. When it came time to style his hair, I smoothed back the fibers using just water because I'll want to be able to comb this and fluff it back up so it hides gaps better after it's dry. I can apply gel or hairspray later to hold it in place, and for this sort of hairstyle, heat tools really weren't necessary. Unfortunately, even though the actual craftsmanship of the wig was fine and I felt like it blended okay in the back, I wasn't crazy about the maturity of this style for the sweet younger face this kid version of the character has. So rather than using this wig I spent hours making, I think I'll be going back to the drawing board to try something else. That's the way it goes sometimes though. Personally, I think wigs are the hardest part of any doll to get just right, so you have to be flexible and willing to experiment to get an ideal final look. I'll hang on to this wig and maybe try to restyle it to see if it can be made softer, but I don't think it's the final solution for this boy, so stay tuned to find out what I do for him next. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.